Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Android App Arena is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Android App Arena, episode 8 for Friday, August 15th, 2014. Lock screen notifications. Hello, fine people of Android land. My name is Jason Howell, and I'm here to be the catalyst for some new Android app installs on your device. No pressure or anything. Today, I want to showcase something that really gets to the heart of Android's customizable approach. It's what I love about Android, making your device your own. And this week... I'm going to pit three awesome apps against each other and pick a winner. Again, no pressure. Let's show off the best of the best when it comes to lock screen notification apps. Now, this was a little bit of a challenge. See, at Google I.O. this year, with the official unveiling of the developer preview of the next version of Android, that's version L, a deep shade of gray was painted over the future of lock screen widgets, something that has commonly been the conduit for bringing notifications into the lock screen, as is the case with the immensely popular Dash Clock widget app. The current developer preview on version L doesn't support those widgets, and I suppose time will tell if the final version actually will or not. It's kind of murky. Not only that, but a new feature of version L is in fact the integration of notifications into the lock screen, similar to what I'll be showing off today. But in order to do that, you need version L, which not so many people have yet, as it's only available in the developer preview. And beyond that, version L's approach, as it stands, isn't nearly as customizable as some of the apps in today's show. So how about I stop with the setup and start showcasing a few apps that you can install right now to get this useful functionality on your pre-version L device. First up is an app that released back in June as an early alpha, and it's had a lot of people talking about its ability to simplify your notifications while surfacing them on your lock screen. It's called Echo, and it goes a few steps further than simply mirroring your notifications. It actually groups notifications into particular categories with the ability for the user to determine which apps fall into each category. The thought being that by grouping notifications, you can decide on the fly what's important to look at right now, and what can wait for later. Set a notification type to priority, and you'll see any of those notifications at the top of your feed when you turn on your screen before anything else. Priority notifications also have the power to turn on your screen when they arrive to make sure you see them immediately. You can also group into social, media, work, and the dumping ground that is other. You can also explicitly hide an app from appearing on your lock screen too, which helps to keep the clutter down. From the lock screen, you'll see your categorized notifications listed inside a collapsible group. For any notification, you can either left swipe to remove it, or you can right swipe for another of Echo's powerful features, setting a reminder for a notification. This actually allows you to see that notification at a later time, or even a location at a later date. So setting it to out will simply resurface that notification when you leave your current location. This makes Echo an interesting time management tool as well. The lock screen gives you quick access to your camera and shows the time, date, and battery in a very minimal way. Echo is in active beta mode right now, but can be downloaded for free through the Play Store. Now, secondly, how about an app that gives you loads of customization options and also does a pretty good job emulating the way that the Moto X presents its active notifications on the screen? Oddly enough, the app that was once called Active Notifications and was quickly renamed to Dynamic Notifications, it's a highly customizable lock screen replacement that centers on your notifications. First, there's a stripped down free version that will show dynamic notifications for you only when new notifications come through. You have controls to select which apps can pass through to your lock screen and a timeout setting that's useful for ensuring that your screen doesn't stay on indefinitely when a notification wakes it up. 
You can also tweak the look of the lock screen by changing things like foreground color, background color, or just let your desktop image shine right through. Pony up for the premium app upgrade to gain full control, which first and foremost includes the desirable ability to make this your default lock screen replacement. So a new notification isn't required in order to launch into dynamic notifications. Also things like a night mode for setting times during which your screen should not turn on with a new notification and wake you from your beauty sleep. There's auto wake for turning the screen on when it detects that the phone is being removed from your deep pockets. And you can customize the swipe actions to determine what dynamic notifications does when you unlock your device in any of the four main directions. That gives you a long list of actions to choose from, from launching your camera to turning off your screen to launching a custom app. So if you're after the Moto X method of lock screen notifications, you might want to check out dynamic notifications for free with a premium upgrade option at $1.99. And finally, an app that we have covered on episode 113 of All About Android a while back. It's called Nils Lock Screen Notifications, and it's one of the first apps that I saw doing this sort of thing. Now, back then, it did require the lock screen widget functionality, but now it can also place itself on top of any lock screen you already have in use. And I'm talking on top, meaning it can actually cover your lock screen if you so choose. Thankfully, you can resize it to taste. And by activating a special setting, you can tap outside of the notifications once to hide them from view and reveal your lock screen in full. Each notification has a number of gestures that you can use to interact with them. Swiping left dismisses that notification. Touching and holding reveals any actions associated with it. And then dragging to an action activates it. Clicking the notification reveals the full text, making it easy, for example, to read an email in its entirety without actually unlocking your device. You can also select which apps will display and which will be hidden from your lock screen. And finally, if you kick down $1.99 for the premium version, you'll get added customization options and you have the ability to utilize third party themes, making your lock screen notifications even more purdy. But the free version of Nils is pretty darn capable without that upgrade. Search for Nils lock screen notifications. That's spelled N I L S in the Play Store. And so, this being best of the best, I'm now charged with picking my favorite of the three lock screen notification apps featured on today's show. Is it Echo Notifications, Dynamic Notifications, or Nils Lock Screen Notifications? That's a lot of notifications. After spending quality time with all three, I choose... Echo Notifications is the winner this week. Now, all apps are incredibly capable this time around, but Echo just kind of brings with it a certain polish that transforms your lock device into something completely different while still bringing those notifications to your screen in a powerful way, particularly by grouping them for easier management on the fly. It's the kind of lock screen that if you show it to somebody, you're likely to hear some oohs and get a, what's that called? Where can I get that? Now, as always, I'm eager to hear what you guys think, so tell me why I'm wrong. Email me, arena at twit.tv. I'm looking forward to reading what you have to say. What's hot to trot this week is going to help you manage your cloud storage, which these days really is a dime a dozen. Over the past few years, I've collected free storage in a number of different places, but only really used two with any regularity. That's Google Drive and Dropbox. Knowing what files I have on each service isn't always easy. And today's app is here to save you from that confusion. Say hello to Unclouded, a way to manage the storage on your Google Drive and Dropbox accounts from one app. And it's really well designed. Adding your accounts is simple, particularly if your device is already logged into the accounts through their respective apps. After doing so, you're given an overview of the storage of the selected service, complete with total storage used and remaining in large interactive graphs. For Drive, you get your storage broken out into subcategories like Google Plus Photos, Gmail, and Drive that, when clicked, actually takes you directly to those apps so you can manage the files within. Beyond that, there are plenty of tools to narrow down your search in useful ways. The Explore tab is an integrated browser of the files stored on each service, and categories will narrow your view to only, let's say, audio or video files, which is a great way to quickly find files that are hogging too much of your cloud storage. And speaking of storage hogs, 
duplicate files can take up a ton of space, so clicking on duplicates is great for whittling down your used space by eliminating those extra files. You can save a lot of space that way. And by unlocking the premium features, you open the door to managing your storage even further with the ability to directly delete files and folders, create folders, upload and send files, and more straight from unclouded without having to set foot in the original apps at all. The goal is, of course, to present your storage in an integrated way that makes using the other apps a bit less necessary, and Unclouded does a great job at that. Not to mention, it's super pretty. Unclouded is free with the premium in-app upgrade for $1.99 in the Play Store. All right, that's it for this episode of Android App Arena. I always love hearing from you guys, and I'm thinking about doing an episode based around nothing but your unique suggestions, kind of a viewer's choice episode of sorts. So send in your favorite app picks, categories, whatever, to arena at twit.tv to be considered for that. There's also a subreddit at androidapparena.reddit.com where I post categories from time to time asking that you add your favorite apps or vote up ones you see posted there already. So take part, it really helps me out. There's a Google Plus community that's easy to find by searching for Android App Arena. You can always download and subscribe to the show by visiting the site at twit.tv slash arena with new episodes every Friday evening. And I host a live viewing party of each week's episode on Fridays at 1 p.m. Pacific at live.twit.tv. That's where I'll interview uh, developers from time to time and just basically chat with you about great apps, show ideas, and, oh yeah, actually watch the, uh, the episode that week before it's published to the feeds. So be there. All right, that's it, folks. Thanks so much for joining me today. I appreciate it. My name is Jason Howell, and I'll see you next week in the arena. Yeah.